I know a lot about financial risk. In fact, I've spent nearly my whole career managing risk and dealing with financial crises. Our risky business study found that our economy is vulnerable to an overwhelming number of risks from climate change. And while not financial in nature, it threatens our economy just the same. The existential issue of our time, the defining issue of, it, of our era, is global climate change. And the reason I think that is, I think that global climate change over time poses severe threats to life on Earth as we know it today. And as time goes on, those severe threats become greater and greater and ultimately, I think, uh, have the potential of becoming uh, catastrophic. The only responsible course for us is to come together as a country and to agree that we have to address the risks from, uh, from climate change. Even if you're skeptical about climate change, there's no denying that it presents major risks that no company, city, or country can afford to ignore. The risky business analysis measures those risks and its findings should concern all of us. What the risky business study has really done is marrying climate scientists with economists and with risk measurement. So that this is the first time really that we've brought that all together on a granular basis looking industry by industry and specifically county by county around the country. What if X happened and what if Y happened? What might we do to react to that? We may arrive at a moment of a point of inflection in our weather in any given country or county unprepared uh, to respond to that. And so I think the value of the conversation, even in the presence of all kinds of uncertainty, is in the way it will allow us to think longer term about what actions we can take today that should those events occur, we'd be best prepared for. People who uh, are living in coastal areas, want to build in coastal areas, developers and builders, community leaders, have to be cognizant of the implications of climate change, rising ocean levels, and general risks of inundation. Frankly, they're going to confront some realities related to the insurance environment. There are many properties that are just not going to be able to be insured. The analysis shows that communities up and down the East Coast and along the Gulf of Mexico face serious economic risks from rising seas and storm surge. By 2030, climate change could cost coastal states up to $35 billion every year in property losses. And it's not only our coasts that are in danger. There are areas of the country uh, which are projected uh, over the next few decades uh, to have much higher levels of heat and humidity than they've had previously. People simply can't work as long and they don't work as efficiently when it's hot and humid outside uh, as they ordinarily do. And a lot of our productive workers, in fact, construction workers, agricultural workers, uh, transportation workers, people who have to be outside. If you invest in real estate, commodities, municipal or corporate bonds, these risks matter to you. Unless we get serious about managing the risks of climate change, we're likely to see more severe losses in the future. I think the fact of the matter is our economy can't take it and our people can't take it. We can still avoid most of the worst impacts of climate change and significantly reduce the odds of costly, catastrophic outcomes on the environment and in turn our economy. But we must start changing our business and public policy decisions today. We stand here today able to feed ourselves as a globe on the back of things that were done 40 and 50 years ago. We have to be sure we don't break that line. This is necessarily at the center of our economy and therefore the center of our future. A very important engagement that the business community can have and should have in its own interest and in the interest of the country is to work toward changing the conversation in the United States so there is public recognition of the severity of this problem and the urgency of dealing with it now and then engaging with the political community so that our elected leaders recognize A, the severity of the problem and B, the necessity to act now. I see American business as being absolutely a central part of solving it. That the kind of innovation and creativity and data-based thinking that American business is famous for, is famous for leading, is exactly what we need here and will be the means of our getting ourselves onto the right path. We're calling on American business leaders and investors to get in the game, to rise to the challenges of climate change. They must do so now. This is not a problem for another day. The investments we're making today will determine our economic future.